Hello and welcome back to the channel. You've joined myself, Dr James Gill, on a beach. Admittedly, not one I think I'd like to be running on. You see, the thing is, I've been seeing an awful lot of injured ankles at the moment, and that made me think that perhaps there's a good idea to do a video looking at ankle injuries and how I can determine what we're going to do with them. You see, I do see a lot of ankles, both as an expedition medic and a GP, and given that people are forever rolling and tripping and turning ankles, I think it seems like a badly designed joint. But the thing is, when you've got that injury, you know, some patients clearly need an x-ray and some don't. The question is, how can we differentiate that? Thankfully, there's a tool, the Ottawa Ankle Criteria, that are going to give me a clear answer about what to do. And frankly, I think it's something that anyone who either owns ankles or does a lot of sports or adventuring should at least be familiar with, hence this video. So with that in mind, let's look at the Ottawa Ankle Criteria. Prior to the development of these rules in 1992, anyone who basically attended the A&E department with an injury would be given an x-ray to be on the safe side. However, only 15% of the people who had an x-ray actually were found to have a fracture. And that's a lot of people having x-rays that don't need them. Now, that doesn't sound too problematic until you realise that's a lot of people waiting many extra hours and the waiting room isn't really the best place to be. Also, x-rays aren't free either, so given that 85% of these previously performed x-rays were negative, that's not only a waste of resource time, but also a large amount of unnecessary radiation to patients. Hence, the Ottawa Ankle Rules would develop to try and reduce this level of unnecessary radiation, excess cost, but also, frankly, to reduce those waiting times. And here's why everyone should at least have a familiarity with the Ottawa Ankle Rules. They give an ancillary benefit. That out in the field, they give us a very reliable tool as to whether or not someone really needs to go to hospital for an x-ray or not. But simply, the Ottawa team worked backwards. They took the 15% of the patients who did have fractures to their ankles on x-rays and compared their clinical examination findings against the remaining 85% of patients who had x-rays but were found not to have fractures. From this data, they were able to work out an effective set of clinical criteria to indicate who does and does not need an ankle x-ray after an ankle injury. When it comes to being out in the wild, or frankly just on a sporting pitch, the power of the Ottawa Ankle Criteria becomes even more valuable. If a patient has merely strained their ankle, then that's much less likely to put to the end of their adventure, or frankly the end of their season, when you compare it to a fracture. So being able to reliably make the call of, I think we just need painkillers and strapping, versus I'm so sorry, we do need to get you to the hospital. This is particularly key, especially if it transpires that that hospital could be a helicopter right away. So, we've established that the Ottawa ankle rules are useful, but how do we use them to determine who needs an ankle strap and who needs a zap of radiation? The first step of the Ottawa ankle criteria, or rules, is actually a really simple question. And honestly, it's one that's incredibly powerful. Can the patient weight bear immediately after the injury? The follow-up to that is can they also weight bear for at least four steps during their evaluation? The implication here is that even though that evaluation is probably going to be slightly delayed in time after the injury, that shouldn't have a huge impact. Now, speaking as someone who's broken plenty of bones and has severely strained my ankles in the past, this kind of makes a lot of sense. When you've broken a bone, it's broken. And if we're talking about your ankle, it's highly unlikely you're going to be able to walk on a fractured ankle, even if after a brief rest. However, this is just the first point. We also need to examine the ankle, and that's one thing that AI can't replace yet, that ability for the clinician to poke and prod the patient. So we want to examine specific locations on the ankle for focal tenderness. And that provides probably the most powerful discriminating point of the Ottawa Ankle Rules. To start off, we want to look at potential fractures in four bones, two in the ankle and two in the foot. So we're going to assess the tibia and the fibula, and we're going to assess the fifth metatarsal and the navicular bone of the foot. 
starting on the outside of the ankle in the malleolar zone, we're looking to see if there's bony tenderness on the posterior edge of the distal fibula going up the leg about six centimetres up from the ankle. Then, coming back down, is there focal bony tenderness at the tip of the lateral malleolus? In the Ottawa ankle rules, this is going to be labelled as point A. We then want to look for similar tenderness on the opposite side of the ankle, checking the tibia initially. So we want to palpate in a similar way to that which we did on the fibula, and we're looking to see if there's tenderness on the posterior six centimetres of the tibia, up the inside of the ankle. Then we're again going to look for tenderness at the tip of the bone, pressing over the medial malleolus, which we'll label as point B. Having cleared both of the large bones of the ankle, we then need to move down the foot specifically to the mid-zone, as depending on the mechanism in which the ankle was injured, a rolled ankle can actually result in a fracture to bones within the feet, not just the ankle itself. So if we follow the same approach that we did before, we're going to start off on the outside of the foot and then move to the inside. We're going to look for pain at the base of the fifth metatarsal, so the base of the bones that connect to the fifth toe, which is labelled point C. Then, crossing to the inside of the foot, we're going to look for pain to the navicular bone, labelled point D. So basically, we're asking, can they walk, and does it hurt if we poke them at points A through to D? Although you don't need a full house to get the x-ray, if there's inability to wait there immediately after the injury, and also you can't take those four steps when we come to have a look at you, it's off to x-ray, you go. So can walk, but ankle pain in the medial malleolus zone, so that's a point tenderness at point A, the lateral malleolus, or point tenderness at B, the medial malleolus, again, off to x-ray. Let's assume you can walk, but foot pain in the mid-zone, so pain with palpation at point C, that being the base of the fifth metatarsal, or point D, the navicular bone, again, you've won that x-ray. Now, this does seem to be a bit of a wide criteria, so how good are these rules at actually helping us work out who's fractured a bone and who hasn't? Honestly, they're shockingly good. The Ottawa Ankle Rules have a 97.6% sensitivity, i.e. the ability to detect a true negative. Thus, if somebody doesn't fit these rules, we can be 97.8% certain they do not need an x-ray. To be honest, I'd take those odds as opposed to having to go off to the hospital and leave my adventure. However, they're not perfect, being less robust at detecting a fracture, which is a bit of a shame. The Ottawa rules have a specificity of 31.5%. That's the ability to detect a true positive. I, if somebody does fit these rules, and that patient will turn out to have a fracture in about one third of cases. Now, those numbers don't really sound great in terms of diagnosing a fracture, but flip it round. When people have injured themselves, when you really break it down, what they want to know, particularly when on expedition or on the sports pitch, is, am I OK? The auto rules allow us to basically say, you probably are OK, or at least we don't need to take you out and get you checked from a fracture perspective, not saying you don't have a sprain. And that's why these rules are so important for expedition medicine, a &E teams, and frankly, people at home, which is why I've done this video. Hopefully, the next time either yourself, a friend or a patient injures their ankle, you'll be able to be in a much better place to say, you can walk on it, it doesn't hurt over there on the tibia, doesn't hurt on the fibula, there's no pain on the fifth metatarsal, nor over the navicular bone, so it's unlikely that you've broken your ankle. I hope that's been a helpful expedition medicine sports slash A&E slash general life video for you. Um, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments down below. And if I could ask a small favour, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get notifications on the next one. Take care, we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.